Good morning and thank you for joining us here on Cheche, the program where opinion counts live on Citizen TV. I'm your host, Udwak Amimo. So the first test of the political parties competing in the March elections takes place tomorrow. That test is the primaries. And while the political parties and their election boards are promising free and fair contests, hurt feelings and disputed results are likely. To deal with that fallout, we have the Political Parties Disputes Tribunal, whose chairperson, Peter Simani, is our guest this morning. Here in the Cheche studio as well, our resident panelists, Citizen TV's Mutegin Jiao and political analyst David Makali. Good morning all and welcome to the program. Good morning. Um, you were telling us earlier that um, you, the, 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 the tribunal has been around for just over two years, but not much is known um, about you and your mandate. Could you just clarify that for our viewers? Yes, um, well, the tribunal has been around for a lot longer than that. It was established under the Political Parties Act that came into force in 2008, July 2008. But it wasn't uh, the, the, the appointments, the vetting, and the approval by Parliament came towards the end of uh, 2010. And then we were sworn in in January 2011, and we immediately started our work. Now, our mandate originally, when we started, was just to uh, arbitrate between three kinds of disputes. The initial disputes were between political parties, uh, between coalition partners, and, and uh, decisions from the registrar of political parties. So those were the first um, issues that we, 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 we dealt with, and we did quite a few in 2011. And then towards the end of uh, 2011, the Political Parties Act was amended. And the mandate was expanded somewhat to include disputes between members of a political party and a political party. They also included uh, disputes between independent candidates and political parties. So the mandate was um, uh, expanded, plus the people in the tribunal were originally three and now we are five, the last two having been sworn in in the last two weeks by the Honorable Chief Justice. Um, just looking ahead to the uh, nomination exercises starting tomorrow, um, and I believe your mandate says that you have um, three months to execute your decisions. Um, and how will you have the time to resolve any disputes arising from the nomination exercise before the March election? Well. And I'm glad you've asked me that question uh, because a lot of people um, are not very clear about the process in, of dispute resolution uh, with, within political parties. Now, this is how it goes. First of all, um, when a political party is registered, the, the, act, uh, the act requires that you have in your constitution a clause that will sort set out how you resolve your internal disputes. Without that clause, you cannot have a party registered. Now, when a dispute then arises that falls within our mandate, in this case, perhaps uh, between a member and the party itself, you then, the, you, you then must exhaust that internal dispute resolution mechanism first. The tribunal has no jurisdiction to hear any matter until they're satisfied that that, uh, that that process has been completed or has been exhausted. It is only then that they can come to the tribunal, and if they're not satisfied with the tribunal, they'll go to the, to the high court. So this is what's going to happen, I think. If there is a dispute, um, all the disputants has, have to go internally and you have been reading in the media where may the main parties have set up dispute panels at the county level. And from the county level, they've set up an appellate system to a national level. So they will have to go through that process first. And those who are dissatisfied with that process, only then can they come to the tribunal. Because we will interrogate that. Who will ensure that has happened? Well, it's the party themselves that have to ensure. And when you come before me, we will have their constitutions. You can't come to us without your constitution. You we'll ask you, what is your con where is it? And we'll read the clause. The clause says this. Show us that you have exhausted that process. 
If we are satisfied that you have exhausted that process, then we will be able to hear you. And if they have not? If they haven't, they have to go back. Th that sounds also theoretical, Mr. Simani. Looking at the timelines we're working with, all these parties are having the nominations tomorrow, today. You know, some have already ha held their nominations, but others are having them today. Tomorrow is the principal day many of them are having, and Friday is the deadline. Yes. By when, you know, given that time, do you think that really there's a possibility that this mechanism you're talking about from the local, if there are disputes at the, at the county level, for example, can be escalated to the national level and so forth until they come to you by the deadline of uh, the closure of the nomination? Re unfortunately, and with respect to the political parties, those are challenges they have created for themselves. How so? Because the political, the dis the we have been there for two years. Nobody told them not to do their uh, nominations last year in December or <laughs> the beginning of January. They have chosen to do them at the last, to do them at the last minute. Um, if they've, done, they've shortened the time for their dispute mechanisms, then that is a challenge they have to face from within. Following on from David's question, um, <coughs> we've been hearing about aspirants fearing um, about the integrity of the processes, um, you know, fears about direct nominations, fears that um, election boards or party powerfuls um, have their own preferred candidates. How then would you deal with a scenario where an aspirant um, is aggrieved um, and feels that the party machinery is working against them and so therefore they cannot get their situation resolved within the party and they cannot seek redress from your board? Well, listen, for the last... The best part of 2011 and 2012, both the IEBC and a whole lot of uh, non-governmental organizations and the Ministry of Justice have been holding seminars, they've been holding workshops. At all these seminars and workshops, which were <coughs> primarily um, uh, held to, 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 to look at the IEBC Act, the Elections Act, the Political Parties mm -hmm. Act, and to amend them you know they were finally uh, enacted into law. All the political parties were represented and came. I was part of that process. I attended a lot of those seminars. So a lot of these things that we are talking about are known to the political parties. So um, one thing that we made very clear, and I have uh, uh, taken every opportunity to ask political parties to examine their constitutions, to examine their processes, and the members to ask themselves, does this work for me? If it doesn't work for you, then the onus is upon you to go back to your uh, executive councils or your decision-making bodies to challenge those processes and say, hey, this kind of system doesn't work for me. And I'll give you an example. There is one of the uh, registered parties which has a, a, a clause that provides that if you have a dispute, then that dispute can only be determined by the National Executive Council. Now, that's of course a ridiculous clause, because within one day, who in far-flung areas is going to put an, a neck together for them to hear your dispute? But we as a tribunal cannot be involved in that. We cannot challenge that, because that's what they have chosen and subscribed to. So it is incumbent upon the members of those political parties to ensure that they have processes that work. If they don't work... I mean, Mr. <coughs> Simani, really, that's true. And, yes. and a lot of these uh, members of these parties are being really... They're under siege from uh, uh, the institutions that should actually give them the, the space to practice the democracy. Who should intervene in this scenario? I mean, people are helpless. You are the tribunal that should actually address grievances coming forth but you can mm -hmm. clearly see that the mechanisms set forth are not going to generate <coughs> those grievances to reach you. How would we, how would the what, tribunal... What, what, what would be the ideal situation? And what, what, what would you advise in the circumstances we are in? Because the deadline is 18th, by which this list should be, with the, um, the nomination should be concluded. The ideal situation would have been time allowing and funds allowing. The ideal situation would have been civic education civic education mm -hmm. by the political parties themselves. You cannot um, blame <coughs> statutory bodies or uh, ask statutory bodies or the courts to interfere within f in agreements between uh, party members. You choose. There are 51 registered parties out there. 
51 constitutions. One assumes when you join these parties, you read. You don't just join. So, <laughs> so, so answer this question from Jeffrey. It follows yes. on from that. Jeffrey in Kakamega, does yes. a political party <coughs> excuse me, have a right to overlook the tribunal and go straight to the high court? No, you don't. And if you go to the high court, you'll be sent back. And you saw from the Kajadu by-elections, that's exactly what happened. Parties went straight to the high court. And the High Court sent them back and said there is a process. <coughs> a similar situation occurred, remember, with the labor matters. People took labor matters to the High Court, and the High Court said, no, go to the Labor Court first, because that is the process. The High Court is an appellate, as far as the tribunal is concerned, the appellate body. So you have to start with the tribunal, then you go to the High Court. Mr. Tmani, how effective is your tribunal? I think it's very effective, though I don't know what you mean, how effective is it. We've had about uh, 20, about 20 uh, uh, disputes stroke appeals. Mm. And to date, none has gone on appeal. Okay, Nobody well, has yes, just maybe, maybe just a highlight yeah. of some of the ones you've actually mm. uh, you know, presided over and what were the findings, just for public awareness. I mean, I, I cannot recall any fundamental decision of the tribunal. Uh, and, and in fact, the more recent one that came to you was the dispute between uh, uh, UDF and TNA, Musalam Dawadi actually in Uhuru Kenyatta, which which uh, was being pushed to the, you know, either register political party or to a tribunal. Well, the, the, the recent UDF um, uh, dispute went to the registrar of political parties. They yes. chose not to come to the tribunal, so I really don't know mm -hmm. anything about that. But there are numerous disputes that we have done um, in the last two years. If uh, you'll allow me, I remember there was a dispute we did when there was a, 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 a problem between in within Ford, Kenya, between the Honorable Wetangula and the Honorable Wamalwa. Yes. That dispute came before us and we resolved it. I remember there was another dispute. What do you mean resolved? Because it's split. The you you what was your finding? That the nomination, yeah. uh, that the, the process of elections hadn't been fair or did you send them back to carry out fresh elections? No, they came, they came and fashion. asked for certain orders right. and, um, and certain determinations and we made those orders and those determinations that they that Let's they be clear, I think it was a dispute over ownership of the party, who was in charge leadership. of the, par uh, no, it was of the party. No, it was a dispute about elections and whether the process of elections yeah. had been done according to the constitution okay. of, the f of Ford Kenya okay. and we made a determination on that. Which was? Well, we said that um, though it, the, the, the elections at the time may not have gone according, strictly according to the constitution of Fort Kenya, but all the parties had participated and uh, had participated and, and, and yes, <laughs> that process. So it was not open to them to then come because they were the losing parties to mm. say that we have not gone according to our constitution and yet you all agreed on that process. Mm. Yes. Uh, you have sent also you, you have a mandate to deal with members and dispute between members and parties. Yes. There is a hue and cry about uh, people who have been registered uh, 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 badly. You mean in uh, illegally? You find yourself you are in a party, you are in TNA, and you, you never even paid a cent. Yes. And uh, the people are trying to go through the political party to get that matter cleared. They still find themselves there. How, what does what tribunal have to do with this? Well, that doesn't fall within the mandate of the tribunal. That falls within the mandate of the registrar of political parties. And um, though I cannot speak on her behalf, but I am aware that what happened was that sometime in uh, 2011 and 2012, the registrar brought together all political parties, and they agreed on a system and developed a software which they would use when registering members. It was all agreed at uh, several workshops, and all the political parties have that software within them on how to key in members of your party, so that it is not the registrar that keys in these names. It is the political parties that key in these names when they're submitted to the registrar. Then the registrar is the one that starts a sort of verification process to show whether you're already a member of this party or that party. And it is ongoing. But you what you must realize is that people are changing parties three, four times a day. <laughs> so okay, that's quite, so <laughs> let's, yeah. that's that's quite interesting. But yes. do you have the resources to carry out your mandate? Because I seem to remember you writing a letter 
um, last month complaining about not having the resources. You'd set up a bank account. Yes. There were no monies. You were relying on the services of yes. volunteers. So where do, where do things stand now? Well, that's true. But um, our position is that it's a statutory body. And every uh, statutory body, when it is formed and it is young, has challenges. And there are challenges that can be explained. And I can explain it this way. When the tribunal was first formed in 2011 and we were sworn in, it was in the middle of a uh, budget year. And we were sworn in by the former Chief Justice Gisheru, who then resigned. And we had no Chief Justice, and we needed a Chief Justice to sort out certain things like remuneration and so forth. So you couldn't get a budget. You couldn't even ask for money if it, there's no Chief Justice to determine it. Um, and when that eventually we got a Chief Justice, the act was amended again in November 2011 in the middle of another budget year. So again, we were caught in between. Um, and it was only uh, towards the end of 2012 that the government machinery seemed to have uh, started moving. And because the focus is on nominations, it became a little urgent that they set us up. And uh, I'm glad to say that um, everything has been sorted out. You saw the swearing in. The, ju the Judicial Service Commission has given us a secretariat. We now have a secretariat at Milimani Law Courts, which is now fully functional. And we are ready. We are five members, and we're sitting. If you want to bring a dispute today, bring it. We'll listen to you. L let's look at very elementary things here f in the interest of the people who are obviously likely to be your clients mm. or your, your customers in the next two days. Yes. You are a candidate for county uh, award, a county award in Shinyaru, in Kakamega County, for example. Yes. You are on a, a party called New Food Kenya. You are, you know, you lose or you're rigged out or some malpractice occurs. The party constitution requires you to appeal to the local board. Yes. After that, you know, to the national board or whatever may be the case. Yes. Just detail us what is the mechanism or the procedure that this person who is aggrieved will use to get to you. Do they write to you? What do they come with? Do they need the party to second the grievance or mm -hmm. the dispute to you? Or how do you, how does the case finally get to yeah. you? That is the, the, the procedure part of it. Well, I cannot speak for the internal procedures. But I would imagine this is how it's going to go. Okay. The nominations are, will probably start, and I'm guessing, on 17th at 6 in the morning they'll open their polling stations. And they're going to vote, and they'll probably close their polling stations at 6 o'clock in the evening on the 17th and start counting votes. Now, during the night of the 17th, some of those results will come out. But most likely on the 18th, most of the results will begin to come out. Now, the 18th is the last day that the IEBC had set for doing nominations parties to carry out nominations. So the aggrieved parties will do two things. Some of them, if they have lost, may pull a rabbit out of the hat, i.e. a certificate of another political party. Yes. And that will sort out his problem. Yeah. And then they will quickly go to the registrar and they will resign from one party and quickly join another, another party and before the Yes, and say this is my nomination. Yes. So those gymnastics may Okay. take place on the 18th. Now, once the 18th uh, 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 finishes as a day, on the 19th is when the dissatisfied aspirants will then file their disputes with their county panels, for those who have county panels. Um, I know in one of the principal coalitions, they require those panels to resolve the dispute within 24 hours. So the, the challenge is really with that panel to resolve within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, whether it is written or oral, I don't know. That their constitution will determine. Right. So we are now on the 19th. So if you file it on the 19th and it works the way it's supposed to work, you'll get a decision on the 20th. Right. Now, if you're dissatisfied with that decision on the 20th and it works like clockwork, you will then file with your national board. I don't know whether it's in writing or orally. And the national board of uh, one particular principal coalition says that uh, their regulations are that they must determine that within 48 hours. So we're now on the 20th, 21st, 22nd is the 48th 
out. Yes. So we would not expect that dispute to reach the tribunal till, well, 36 hours after the 19th. Right. That would be perhaps on the 23rd, right. in which event you will then go to your representatives, uh, legal representatives, or yourself, and you write a complaint, and you file it before the tribunal on that particular day, say 23rd, if everything <coughs> is working well. <coughs> yeah. if, if you came to the tribunal today, so assume today is the 23rd, naturally we require you to call the other side. So you will be required to go back and serve the, op your opposing party and perhaps come to us on the 24th. And it's on that day that we'll then hear you and see what orders you see. Will you okay. do a timeline? Will you do the... the well, the because, of the, yeah, because of the, the urgency, we can make, depending on, the, depending on the dispute, we can make a decision right there. Okay, we have to pause there. Uh, you're watching Cheche live on Citizen TV. Our guest this morning is Peter Simani, the chairman of the political party's disputes tribunal. If you have any questions for him, you know, aspiring candidates, uh, people who are being uh, nominated tomorrow, you can SMS 2442 or tweet Cheche underscore TV. We'll return to that um, point um, about the uh, process of um, um, filing uh, disputes to your tribunal, but also the gymnastics yes. and the uh, party changing um, that um, we mentioned earlier.